Good morning, everybody. This is a webinar by Micrographics. My name is Paul Storm. I'm a technical resource at Micrographics. And today we are going to have a look at the AEC collection and specifically termed the gold standard. So we'll get to the gold standard later. We'll help you remember exactly what it is that we're talking about. So first of all, what is the architecture, engineering, and construction collection? Now, for most of you that are in the industry, you would typically, one would typically use one product. So one would purchase a Revit license if one is an architect and utilize the Revit license. Or one might be a civil engineer, so one might be using Civil 3D or InfraWorks <clears throat> or any one of these products that Autodesk has, and there are many of them. So what they did was they said, okay, let's give a user a license that contains many products and those products are applicable to the architecture, engineering and construction sector of the economy. There are three such licenses. One of them pertains to the built environment, another one to the manufacturing environment, and yet another license also pertains to the uh, entertainment industry uh, so that would be more than movies micrographics we play on the construction and on the manufacturing side I'm personally on the manufacturing side and but some of my colleagues are on I'm on the build side but my colleagues are on the manufacturing side so what they say over here is that the AAC collection provides designers engineers and contractors a set of BIM and CAD tools supported by cloud-based common day and environment that facilitates project delivery from early stage design through to construction. It also gives you the ability to link up to the cloud. Now, strictly speaking, that is true. However, there are, there are even additional licenses that one may purchase that facilitate a much deeper understanding or much deeper delve into the cloud. Uh, but that is a topic for another day. Then create a high quality, high performing building and infrastructure designs with concept and detailed design tools. Correct. Optimize projects with integrated analysis, generative design, and visualization and simulation tools. That's also great. And improve the predictability in the field with tools that maximize constructability and project coordination. Now, it all sounds very good, but remember, this is one license. And how all of these products work is one license for one person. So a person that wields this license is, is a capable person that is able to use more than one piece of software to uh, complete a task. And this might be done in a team as well. So if you have a business, you might have multiple instances of these licenses floating around. But you might find that people use these different licenses together to perform some or other tasks. Our agenda today is to see what software exactly is included in the license. And who would typically purchase the license? What are the typical workflows? And by this we mean really typical. There are many workflows, as you will see. And then consult the Autodesk University for inspiration. For those of you that are not familiar with Autodesk University, it's a great platform every year. The best in the world come together. Uh, usually it is in Las Vegas, but during COVID now it's moved online. And that is where the best in the world showcase what they are doing with Autodesk software. That's a great resource if you want to be competitive on the world stage and you want to compete with the rest of the planet in terms of how you use your Autodesk software. And then lastly, we will we'll end off with questions if there are any. So what software is included? A lot. So I can't bandy about specific value, but if you look at something like Revit, Civil 3D, AutoCAD, InfraWorks, if you had to buy a Revit license, standalone, on its own, for a user and then you would buy another license a civil 3d license for the same user or another user those two licenses independently will already cost you more than those two licenses independent I saw somebody just left sorry about that so we have a Revit license and a Civil 3D license independently already costs more than an AAC collection license. So if you are going to use, say, a Revit and an AutoCAD license on a project, and you're this 
one person, then it's going to be more financially beneficial for you if you buy the AAC collection. The same goes for InfraWorks or Advanced Steel or Robot and some of the other products that you see there. They're all different prices, but with the major products, if they are usually the rule of thumb is more of two of them that you are going to use, rather get an AEC license. So that's what software is included. The total value of the software is hundreds of thousands of rands, and you're getting it for a fraction of the price. But it comes with the understanding that you'd be able to use more than one product to perform the task at hand. What are these, these products? Well, first of all, there's Revit. So Revit is the premier BIM authoring tool on the planet, which around the world is used to facilitate the coordination of building trades. That would be architects, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, um, structural engineers, interior designers, facade designers. And here you can see that the link that I've got on the screen over here, it will show you what's all available within the software. So often you will see that within that uh, product, they would go into things like what it is, but also what workflows typically you can use with it. So it's a great resource. What I'm trying to say is that if you are looking for an introduction into the software that you might want to consider using on the project, maybe you are only a Revit user, then do come and have a look at the overviews of these Revit platforms so you can understand them better or whatever software platform you are interested in. So here you can see, for instance, we are talking about a lot of workflows there. In addition, the collection, as you can see over here, that is now referring to the AEC collection. It's AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Navisworks, InfraWorks, and Recap Pro that might be used together with each other to ultimately create a building. That could, again, remember with understanding that it is in the hands of one person to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve with Revit. So Revit is used on the architectural side to come up with the design of the building. <clears throat> on the structural side, where you can see the, the, the architectural leg of what it is that you can do with Revit. There's a lot. Design documentation, some analysis. Not too in-depth, but just basically an understanding of where you are with regards to energy. Then you've got the coordination and visualization, rendering. And then there are some workflows as well that you can use. So Revit and Insight, for instance. And this is for is something that you can do with a C collection. It's already built into Revit, but with the Insight product, it becomes even more powerful. So Revit and Insight can be used together with each other to perform an energy analysis. Revit and Recap together can be used so that you can capture what is already within a built environment. It might be a complex site. It might be a complex building or an existing building. It could be a petrochemical plant. It could be anything, really. But as long as you've got access to some a drone or maybe just a, a standalone laser scanner or a high resolution camera, then you can create photogrammetry. We can create that point cloud for you to come and model your model in context of what is already existing. And then Dynamo is built into Revit. That's a bit of automation. And there are also some good examples of how people are using this. So it's a great way for you to kind of learn what it is that other people are doing with Revit in architectural. And we've also got structural engineering. Now, this is where it becomes interesting. Structural engineering is usually a very specific thing that guys do if you are from structural engineering. Revit is used for rebar all around the place. So you might find that somebody has created a bridge design within Civil 3D or within InfraWorks. And then they will ultimately bring that model into Revit so that they can go and put rebar in there. So it's very exciting. Then we've got design to detail. So you might see that, okay, so they've got some uh, connections that are happening in Revit. But again, this can be brought into a further product called Advanced Steel, where it's specifically built around steel detailing. And even things like uh, CNC files can be generated for cutting those steel members and those parts, generating a bill of materials or bill of quantity. 
or the bolts and the nuts for the plates, whatever it is that it's required, that's then done within advanced steel. But the beginning of the design is done within Revit. So it's essentially a matchstick model. And then it's taken through to into advanced steel. And then on the other side of things, we've got the structural analysis part of things. And that happens in robots. So those three products work together with each other. It's not just, it just, it's, it's not just created in Revit. So if you only had to buy a Revit product, you wouldn't be able to do the structural analysis yeah, you wouldn't be able to do this, the, the CNC files for manufacturing and your detailed connections. That would be lost in the workflow. And then lastly, also we've got the MEP engineering side of things. This is much more contained within Revit itself, the analysis once again, but then also our, uh, our ways of working with the heating and cooling loads analysis that's all built inside of Revit. However, there is also something called uh, CAD MEP and in that we can take the MEP components that exist within the model, convert them into something that we call manufacturing parts and those manufacturing parts is what we can send out into a factory for them to manufacture directly from the model. So if we use manufacturing parts and we've got the same catalog of elements that are getting used within the model, then we can spool those catalog elements onto the actual shop floor. So we cut out the middleman and we say, all right, we know exactly what we're doing with the design, so we want that delivered on site at a specific date, and that is then how that is done. But again, you need that extra bit of software before you can do that, or at least an interaction between yourself and an external party that is using that software. Something that you do yourself, you might be, and I've seen this in practice, you might be the person that is responsible within the manufacturing, then you might want to rework the, <coughs> excuse me, you might want to rework the Revit model so that you can get that into the manufacturing part of it. So that is Revit. So looking at that, that's one of the products, Revit, and already we've alluded to the fact that we can use Revit together, in this case with advanced steel, for the detailing of structural members with insight, for more detailed energy analysis, and we've also seen them allude to robot structural analysis, which is where the uh, structural, uh, the, the actual finite element method is executed on the uh, model and where we can find code checking happening. So in other words, standardizing steel sizes so that we can easily buy that from a manufacturer or from a steel retailer. So already we've now come into CrossFit. One, two, recap as well, three, four, and five. Five products that are used together just by looking at Revit. We've also got AutoCAD. AutoCAD actually comes in a tool set. So you not only get AutoCAD when you get the license, you also get Plant 3D, which is used on petrochemical or plant facilities. You get AutoCAD Electrical and so on. So it's not just a CAD platform that you get, but it's also all the tool sets that's included within your AutoCAD license. I think most people are familiar with AutoCAD. Not so many are familiar with the verticals within AutoCAD. So I'd just like to give out the sort of a bit of information as well, this architecture and the MEP tool sets that you see over here. That used to be the competition for Revit in the old days, although some people still use it today, but the modern platform of choice is Revit. So although the architecture and the MEP tool set does exist, the, the, the platform of choice is Revit. However, the electrical, the plant 3D, and the map mechanical, that is still all current technology and you get that with your AutoCAD license. But AutoCAD is not a BIM platform as such. Some of the verticals, in other words, your plant 3D, that would be a BIM platform. And then the vertical that isn't included, that is also built on the AutoCAD application program and interface, that's what we call the API, in other words, the component model of the software, that is called Civil 3D. Now, Civil 3D is a beast of a program. It's meant for civil designers, for civil engineers that want to build development corridors. That would be your roads, your trains, 
bridges, uh, dams. You can do uh, analysis of the uh, rainfall flooding using storm and sanitary analysis, which is included with Civil 3D. All of that ability, you can link in GIS data, and <clears throat> you can even base some of your design on an existing InfraWorks model, which is just meant for larger scale, you know, more easy to work with. But here you can see that you get the, the civil license as well. So by this stage, you might be saying to yourself, well, I might just be a structural engineer, or I might just be a civil engineer. And civil engineers, they don't, or while they do have some structural cap uh, capability, that, that, that's not their focus. So they, they wouldn't necessarily be going to try and understand the, the stresses and the strains that are on the members of a building. Their job would be to design the infrastructure. So they might ask themselves, okay, so why would I need more than one product? And the answer is, you are probably going to use a combination of different products depending on what your business is. So if you're a, you're a civil engineer, you might be using InfraWorks, Civil 3D, uh, vehicle tracking, reality capture. Those are the ones that you use together. You might not be interested in robots. But the cost of the license is still going to be less. So whatever it is that you need to try and do with Civil 3D, or with, with other packages in, in combination with each other that you can do. There you can see an example of a civil 3D InfraWorks and a Revit design. The reason why Revit would be there is for the rebar. Right? So if you want to do the rebar design within these pillars and within the sections on the bridge over there, that's going to be Revit. On the InfraWorks, that's probably be to, to, to get the existing GIS data, some, some flooding analysis that you can do even in InfraWorks if it's a large project, or Civil 3D. Civil 3D for the detailed design, super elevation of the highway, in, InfraWorks maybe for uh, uh, options that you want to give in, in terms of the design, as well as visualization and rendering. Civil 3D and Recap Pro, is a very powerful work set. Um, it can be problematic in the sense that you might need a pilot, a registered pilot for a drone, a laser scanning drone, to, to operate in the field where you want to operate. It's not anybody that can fly one of these drones. It's not allowed by law, so typically you want to get a pilot to do this for you. But you can go down to a finer detail of, of, of picking up potholes in a rolled road if you want to do road rehabilitation. So you can fly the drone down the road, scan the road as you go along, compare it to an existing road and figure out exactly where all the potholes and the areas are that you need to pay attention to fix that road. Alternatively, you might be in mining and you want to know how much of people excavating from one day to the next day or they actually have they done the work that they said they did. And also just for existing infrastructure. So often within a city or a town, there are existing buildings, existing structures. You have to fit your bridge or your road between all of those structures, and that is where you can go with that. So all the 3D and InfraWorks and Revis and Navisworks. So you can see another example of how the different products are used together. And again, it comes within the AEC collection. And in this case, it's very much centered on the civil engineer. Right. And there you, also you can see some examples, the Hyperloop, and some of the other projects that people are using that combination of software on. InfraWorks, also a very powerful package. It's very much used with larger scale infrastructure. It reads existing GIS data from Bing and from a, a typical database, but you also link it up to a very specific database, for instance, in Cape Town, where I live. Uh, the city of Cape Town would have every manhole covered down to the last millimeter or centimeter, and you'd be able to link all of that pipe networks in. Uh, depending on who modeled it, you'd be able to link that in from an existing GIS database, which is typically in the control of a municipality. And you can very quickly design some roads, uh, bridges, and perform some, some, some flooding analysis on the cloud and also create a real world or contextual model. So this is what InfraWorks is very good with. You can bring in models from multiple sources. You can have your, <clears throat> your Revit models, your Civil 3D models, your InfraWorks GIS data, some plant files, whatever it is that you want to bring into InfraWorks, you can basically do that and also create some options 
for that design. And there you can see some examples of the visualization of a building, some parking spaces, and what have you. Right. So again, there's a combination of products that you can use. InfraWorks Civil 3D Recap, InfraWorks Civil 3D Recap, InfraWorks Civil 3D and Revit. And you can see it's just a repetition of what we've already seen on the Civil 3D side, and there you can see some examples. So uh, typical usage would be infrastructure, uh, large scale, and then a lot of the detailed design would be done in Civil 3D. Navisworks Manage is a very powerful product as well. This usually, it's like InfraWorks in the sense that it federates models or brings models together in one container. But Navisworks is much more about the BIM process with buildings where we do quantification. You might have tens or even hundreds of models that are coming in from different Revit models. Usually with skyscrapers today, every floor is a model on its own. If you have a skyscraper of 100 stories, it's already going to be 100 Revit models. And because they are codified, we can do quantification on those elements, and we can map that across onto resources to understand uh, how much of what we might need. So that would include, okay, we've got the beam. That beam needs to be uh, painted, and so how much paint would we typically need for the surface area of that beam? We can work that out using formulae uh, to come to a final quantification. It's not exactly a bill of materials. It's not going to give you all your nuts and bolts and what have you, but you can program that in if you wanted to, including uh, things like uh, labor cost. Right? So that might just be an item that you then add to the quantification. What they show over here is also very interesting. It's a flash detection, which can be done on Navisworks. Navisworks is still the premier platform for clash detection. In, it allows us to save up to one-fifth of the construction cost uh, because on-site clashes are very, extensive, are very expensive to resolve. We have to stop the site, we have to stop the machinery, we have to stop the people. We have to then have to sort that clash out, redesign it, and while that is happening, everything is standing still and everybody's under pressure. We are losing money on the project. So <clears throat> we like to resolve these clashes before the time. So the advantage of Navisworks over something like, and you do get this, clash detection on the cloud is that clash detection on the cloud does not accommodate all possible files that you can do within Navisworks. But the typical workflow, there is now also the opportunity to do clash detection automatically on the cloud, much faster, easier to manage, but Navisworks is still, I would say, the most accurate and detailed way of flashing. It's just that you need to have an operator that knows exactly what they're doing. You can bring in many, 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 many different files. Even if they're coming in from something like a competitor's software product, then they could still read that model and you can do quantification. Just the model structure would be a little bit different. So that's 4 and 5D simulation as well. So that's uh, time-based. So when is what constructed? And then 5D simulation, you bring some cost items in. It's not that detailed in, on the costing side, so the 5D simulation is not so detailed. But very easily, the 4D in, information can be integrated also with a further package for 5D simulation uh, to have a much closer understanding of what it is that is going to, to uh, happen on that project. Right, so InfraWorks and Navisworks, one is typically used for infrastructure, federation of models. The other one is more used for building federation of models. And the other one is more for design and things. The other one is for quantification. Right? So it's a, it's a bit of a more detailed product for you to delve into the uh, quantification, flash detection of a project. We've got all these docs. This is now part of the AC collection. It's a very powerful license in the sense that it allows you to hook up any cloud-based project with limitations. It will not allow you to collaborate with other people. So in other words, you will not be able, for instance, to co-author a Revit model with somebody in another uh, on the cloud. So often in today's project, we might have somebody arguing well, in here in South Africa, the, other, the opposite side of the world would be Australia. But we, myself, and somebody else in Australia might be working on the same Revit model at the same time. 
or we could be using data shortcuts using Sim3D, or we could be collaborating on IntraWorks in the cloud, even though we are in completely different areas in the world, we are still able to collaborate with each other in real time. What it is, Docs is not going to allow you to do that. It's also not going to allow you to flash detect automatically. But what it is going to allow you to do is to share your files with other teams, at the very least, and to create some issues on the cloud, and then to communicate with the rest of these teams in a design fashion. It's not on the build side, it's not for construction. There are other licenses that are more geared towards the construction side of the business, depending on where in the process you fit in. But the docs license, it's great that they've included it because at least you'll be able to join that project and start with that collaboration and data management with what it is docs. So very powerful, very it's a very good thing that they've included this within the license. I believe everybody can get access to the cloud. It's good also in terms of um, understanding the cloud, loading your files up onto the cloud, storing the data in the cloud and getting comfortable with working on an Amazon server so that even if you're working on your own, it could act as a backup. It could, you know, if your computer doesn't work, then you still got your files in the cloud. That's a very good thing uh, that one has got that available. And so we've got civil engineers, architects, and document management. Now, quite exciting, especially if you're in architecture or in civil, is this uh, doc for civil engineers. A very nice workflow if you use a right-hand Gordon system, something like a universal transfer to Mercator, or, uh, not a South African Gordon system where they swap X and Y around, but you typically find on some projects that the South Africans would even stipulate that a different coordinate system to a South African coordinate system is used and you can use it this way but you can even design a site let's suppose like a, a, a shopping center it's typically got a parking lot you have to do um, the development of the parking lot in parallel to developing the shopping center and then every now and then you want to link that model in to the Revit model so on the cloud it even allows for the civil engineers to publish the surface into the cloud and for the architect or somebody else, civil engineer, mechanical engineer, ever is using Revit, you just link that file in. It is dependent upon the coordinate system, but it's a great technology. Sites and uh, uh, surfaces are usually something that the architects are very interested in, and if the correct workflow is there, then that can work to your advantage. And it will be on the cloud. There's one version of the truth. That's the great thing about these clouds. There's only one version of the truth. It's always the latest file, the communications in real time. So great that they've added the docs license to the AAC collection. You can join as many projects as you like, host it on other companies' hubs, or you can create a hub and invite somebody else to come and work on your hub. Advanced Steel, we've already mentioned, that is the AutoCAD vertical. Again, not included in the tool set, but it is there for very much detailed steel joint construction, manufacturing, CNC file generation. It's an automated tool for the steel manufacturers. And usually it is built around the Revit model. So if you make, if you start with the Revit model and you communicate the Revit model with, with advanced steel and you put some joints in and you put some beams or you change a beam and you write that back into Revit, then you will find that Revit updates to reflect what happened within the advanced steel model. So they're interoperable. But whatever you change in Revit goes through advanced steel. Whatever you do in advanced steel goes back into Revit. Some of the joins might just not be visible because Revit doesn't understand how to display them, but they would have a symbol in there to display that there is an actual joint. But then the details of the cutting list, the number of bolts, the, the bill of materials, bill of quantities, that would be taken from the advanced steel model. So Great workflow there, and very much for use within the um, advanced steel <clears throat> or in the steel manufacturing area. It won't come and do analysis for you on the actual plate. That's something that gets kicked over into the manufacturing side of things. So if you have uh, Inventor, Mastran, that would be able to simulate the forces that are impacting on those joints. So that's more of a manufacturing thing, but typical 
these joints would be designed according to code. So it would just be a case of having somebody with experience and with codes that would then be able to design those joints for the building. Other things that might that you might want to do here are, 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 are stairs and uh, railways. Yeah. So walkways. The stairs are very much more detailed. You can have some uh, vertical stairs or vertical ladders, access ladders to, to plants or buildings. So there's a lot more that you can do within this advanced steel. It's quite a nice package to use. It's AutoCAD based. It's a vertical. Insight. Insight based on lead, what do they call it, lead 2030 goals. Uh, it's an American standard basically and they aim to get all the designs down to a very specific level. You can do sunlight analysis, you can do uh, lighting analysis, typical sort of how good is the building uh, in terms of its performance, how much energy would you have available. There is something else within the Autodesk stable called Green Building Studio, which is much more powerful than Insight. So that's also available to a energy analysis team. You typically find that your experts would use in Green Building Studio. And you can see Johnson's control in international. Some of the other success stories where people have used the insight to learn about the Revit model that they are creating to do the heat and cooling energy analysis and so forth. So some of this is, is actually built into Revit. And but or if you've got the AC collection, that's then more powerful. <clears throat> Format Pro. The best way to explain this to somebody is to say, well, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like uh, a SketchUp, right? In the in the AutoCAD world, uh, it's a sort of quick modeling tool where architects can do some designs on an iPad or uh, just generally during the design. So instead of using SketchUp, you can use Format and form it can write back into Revit so you don't have the disconnect between one and the other. Some architects actually do use this uh, in Cape Town, so they find it quite useful. Recap Pro, that's Reality Capture, so that's going to be uh, scanning either with laser or photogrammetry and that can then create real world context for your model. Most of these can be linked into Autodesk products, the point clouds, coming to Revit, AutoCAD, base products, Civil 3D, InfraWorks, Max. A lot of these programs can bring in uh, cloud, uh, point clouds, and that just provides the context. We've got robot structural analysis, very powerful uh, finite element analysis package. We've already seen a little bit about this. And what's nice about this is once you've done the analysis, you can actually write the reaction forces, the bending moments, and the shear force diagrams back into Revit again. So you can see what's happening in the design. Uh, but of course, first you need robot. Again, it's interoperable, so you can bring it into Revit and from Revit back into robot. The model will update with any changes that you've done. And it's actually three programs that work together. So it will be advanced steel, Revit, and robot that work together to give the ability to do that structural analysis. So I would say for a structural engineer, it does calculations and some detailed design. Definitely we want an AC collection because you can leverage robot, Revit, and advanced steel together. 3ds Max, well that's what Hollywood made, movies are made of, literally. And this is much more of a rendering platform. Some people use it as a modeling platform, some furniture manufacturers and so on. But it does take a lot of overhead. So you need to have the skills to be able to use Max properly. It's usually something that somebody rests the career on and the results that you can get are basically you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between reality and fantasy but that's only if it's in the hands of something that's really 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 good right. but it is available a lot of people do a lot of the larger firms would use Max for the uh, renders for architects so your uh, Sarotas of the world your Stephen Anthony's they would be using Max for their final renders or for their design. There are alternatives to Max. We are also uh, micro graphics as such, not Autodesk as such, but there are alternative rendering platforms as well that is available that's easy to use. But Max is included within that license. 
So if you're a renderer, if you're somebody that wants to make a nice picture of whatever model that you've got there, maybe you want to change the models a little bit, designer and a visualization, then you can use the ultimate to go and show that to whoever it is that you want to create a pretty picture for. What is this rendering? That's cloud-based. Usually it takes uh, some money. So when we've got Revit, guys using Revit, they've got the, the ability to render uh, scenes within Revit itself. It uses up their computer. It might take a long time to render as well. So they prefer to use cloud rendering. They pay for cloud credit. And then what happens is that the scene is uploaded into the cloud, rendered on the cloud, and then emailed back to the user. So in other words, your computer is freed up. You can use that cloud rendering and you've still got the ability to carry on with your work because your computer is not busy rendering. And that's available not only for Revit, but also for AutoCAD and some of the other packages, some of 3D, Namusworks and what have you, you can render that on the cloud, uh, provided that you've got some, some, uh, some rendering credits <coughs> that you can also purchase from Micrographics. Some clients prefer to do that because then they don't have to sacrifice their machine to a rendering process. Vehicle tracking. That's quite exciting. So especially for guys that are doing access, parking, uh, road design, what this does is it allows you to see the, artic the articulation of vehicle. All right. So if you have a large truck, how does that truck turn? What, is, what do the wheels do? What's the sort of space that you need? You typically see this within parking garages. It's very important. Also parking lots it helps you to, to, to lay out the parking spaces for a certain type of car. Very useful when you're designing your infrastructure for, for guys to pop. So here you can see, for example, there is a large truck and it's got the vehicle articulation and therefore the road needs to have this very funny shape. But we know it needs that funny shape because we used vehicle tracking and so we can actually design that road correctly for that vehicle. You might get into big trouble if you don't use vehicle tracking because then the, the vehicles don't or can't actually access that, that area. Uh, it's, that's based on, uh, or that can operate on Civil 3D and on AutoCAD. That's very good. Fabrication MEP, that's more on the, on the HVAC manufacturing side of things, where we try and integrate the Revit model with the manufacturing of parts and some detailing and to get some estimation and so forth, and how to create fabrication-ready models. So again, it's a, it's a sort of a database for manufacturing, so that we can just go from the design into manufacturing onto the site without a middleman. Much more on the NEP side, we've got structural bridge design, that's specifically, as it said, for the guys that are designing bridges. And uh, that helps us with the structural bridge. Okay, so how uh, to do some integrated bridge analysis software for small to medium span bridges. So even if you're into the bridge building area of things, then you can take that into your model and see what the analysis for that bridge would be. Again, take it into Revit afterwards so you can do some rebar. The last one that we've got over here is just the what it is drive. So, Autodesk Drive is just an online platform for you to sort of store your models and share it with other guys if you want them to come and have a look at your designs in the cloud. So it's a little bit like Docs, but different in the sense that you don't need a license to see it. You, you know, it's a limited amount of space, but at least you can upload the file and give somebody else a link to go and have a look at that file. Wow, all right. So that's an enormous amount of information in a very short time. <clears throat> but it does pay to go and have a look at these individual products and see right, which one of them is are already recommended within the software just as you can see from the overview the recommendation is to use some of them together for a specific workflow who needs a license again generally a license of AAC is less expensive two of the main products that it contains and somebody who needs more than one product working together should get an AAC license instead I think I should clarify this together meaning one person so the software together not the people together right so it's 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 uh, the you the license user states that you're only allowed to use one license per person. And so if you have two people, you'll need two AEC licenses, but it's going to be worth your while if those people use more than one product at the same time. <clears throat> what are the typical workflows? 
again, infrareg to federate models for infrastructure and to have design options. Many times different models can be occurred and GIS data can be imported using Navisworks to federate building products, InfraWorks into Civil 3D into Revit and Navisworks, Revit, Robot and Von Steel, and Revit and CAD AD for fabrication. So those are the typical things that we find within the industry where guys are using the software together and using the AAC licenses. And then we come to the gold standard. All right, so why do I say that this is gold standard? Because of AU. AU is the atomic number or the atomic symbol for gold. And uh, that's what Autodesk University is actually known as, AU. Right? And this is possibly the best resource that I could possibly direct you towards if you have an AAC collection. Because Autodesk, there you can see the gold standard, AU. Autodesk registration, or the university is open right now. It is the most amazing resource where the best people in the world at what they do would go and have a look at, all right, so how do we use um, Revit and, for argument's sake, Civil 3D and put another search word in Flutter. Right, so let's see what they come up with. That. You can search any, any topic and they will then go and search that. What it will find for you, it might not be this year's lecture, it might be 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, who knows. But there you can see, all right, <clears throat> Here are some lectures, typically about an hour long. They've got some, some uh, documentation, videos that you can go and have a look and see how are these guys using this software together. Right? And they are all different sorts of uh, lectures for different reasons. Why the best in the world would be doing what they are doing with that software. It includes pretty much everything under the sun. <laughs> And it is the gold standard, right? So if you want to be in the Autodesk world, you want to be on the build side, you want to use that, uh, those licenses together for architecture and building and engineering or construction or whatever it is, that's where you can go to anything from the fourth industrial revolution, something as complex as optimizing multivariable uh, uh, problems using Dynamo and Revit, if you are going into something like Project Refinery, then you can even learn how to do these things over here. All right, so there really is too much, in fact, for one person or for one discipline to, to master. But if there is something specifically that you might be interested in, then I would recommend you come and have a look at this gold standard AU, Autodesk University. So hopefully that sticks in your mind. AU means gold. So it's Autodesk University and that AC collection on the construction side of things, that is definitely where you want to play, both in the architectural building and engineering, on the construction side of things as well. Right? A lot of the stuff will also talk about the cloud-based stuff, but there's a lot of information over here. So you can play in the, uh, the construction side of things as well, and then <coughs> uh, civil infrastructure on the product design and manufacturing on the media and entertainment not so much either we've we've even found quite a few uh, of our customers work together so you might have a, a structural engineer and a manufacturer working together using a product design and manufacturing collection versus an architecture building and engineering uh, uh, collection and they would work together because it's something like uh, Inventor can operate together with uh, Revit very well, depending on how it is exported or saved. Often families within that are contained within Revit are manufactured using software that is on the manufacturing side, and you want to write that out into a family and use that in a Revit model. Usually retailers, they might do something like that. Uh, so they, we do tend to facilitate the understanding of how the two different collections would work together so that our clients can operate with each other in a more efficient manner. And then also on civil infrastructure, if you're into civil in infrastructure, some very good lectures here as well. Um, and again, Autodesk University, AU, gold standard, this is where you're going to learn how to use that software together 
to make your company some money, to put you in competition with other people in the world, guide you as to how you should be educating your guys that are working for you, use the lectures, use the, um, the resources that they make available to everybody in the world free of charge, you don't have to pay for it, but the frustration often is that, oh, well, I don't have an AC collection, and so I can't do these workflows where I have to run a trial for 30 days, and after that's done, it's done. If you have one of these licenses, then you can always help or enable your workforce to learn these new workflows, to learn how to use the software together, and how to make your company more competitive and efficient. Right? So it does take time to learn as well. So you, if you only know how to use AutoCAD, now you want to use Revit and AutoCAD together, well, you're probably going to have to spend some time learning Revit first before you can use Revit and AutoCAD together, similarly with Navisworks and managing all these items, so planning that sort of, or planning the education of your work might be uh, challenging, but doable. And also we are here to help with that, so if you need somebody trained up in a piece of software, that's why we're here, we can facilitate that for you. But once that is done, once you know how to use the software and you're looking for inspiration and you're looking to advance your company, then go to the gold standard, Autodesk University, the global platform, it's online, it's free, everything that you want is there and it's going to give you the greatest ideas about what to do in the future using your Autodesk software. So just in conclusion, the AC collection allows you to do the best possible combination of Autodesk products to use in any specific workflow of course industry-based and the AC collection is the most cost-effective license for advanced workflows to be able to be enabled within your practice. All right, so if you have some guru, CAD guru, BIM guru, civil guru within your office and they know how to use all sorts of different software, get them an AC collection license, it's the most cost-effective and it's also going to free up their hands and enable them to do the most for you using that software. So with that, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed the, uh, the short, dem not demonstration, but the webinar today. It's a bit much to demonstrate physically. Do use those links. Go and have a look at the AEC collection, the links to most of the software. You'll find on there to see what software is available. And then also go and register for Autodesk University. It's coming up shortly. Uh, you will be pleasantly surprised to see what's going on there. We used to have them in South Africa as well. Uh, now with COVID, we haven't had one for a few years, uh, but it's also a lot of fun to go to these Autodesk University uh, shows, or road shows, uh, get togethers, and quite often attendance also gives you some points for your regulatory uh, authority. So yeah, you go to some lectures and you get some SACA points, helps you with the continuous education, but support Autodesk University, go and register and go and see what's new in the world, what guys are doing this year right now, globally to leverage these uh, combination of software within a workflow to give the best results. With that, I'll hand it over to you. If you have any questions? Just having a chat box here. Doc says thanks. Jock, you're welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, everybody else as well. Message. All good. All right. All right, everybody. Um, until next time, enjoy your Autodesk software. And remember, go and register for Autodesk University. The gold standard, AU, for Autodesk. Goodbye. <laughs>